Welcome to PSG Health Insights. Much has been written and reported in the media on government's plan to implement national health insurance. Some say that it is possible, whilst others say the obstacles are just too insurmountable. But what do those in the know think? John Crank, Head of Healthcare for PSG Consult Corporate, poses critical questions to representatives from three of the largest open medical schemes in South Africa regarding the impact and plausibility of national health insurance. Dr. Ramasia, thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure. It's accepted that NHI is going to be phased in over a period of time and the Green Paper spoke to three distinct phases um, over 14 years and more recently the National Development Plan mentioned a period potentially as long as 25 years. What is your take on when the uh, NHI will start Im impacting medical schemes themselves? As we have seen that this project, it started at the underserviced area, mainly in the, in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And starting from there, there are huge challenges in those areas. So therefore, they have to still have to address the question of the human resource, they still have to address the question of the infrastructure and as well as addressing other logistics that goes with a running well well oiled machine. Therefore, to me, with those kind of challenges, I see it taking actually much longer. But the positive side of it is that if they can get the benefits uh, package right and as well as the funding mechanism, that will be able to ensure that the, the, the NHI itself going forward, it becomes a success. I see. Um, one of the aims of, of NHI and um, the Department of Health and specifically the Minister has been quite vociferous about this, is to, is to address the rising healthcare costs in particularly the private sector. Um, in your view, are, is this objective realistic and, and if so, where do you expect to see the first pressures coming in terms of uh, addressing those costs in the medical scheme? environment? Well, uh, there's definitely a scope to reduce the cost of uh, private healthcare sector. And there are a number of factors that are driving the cost. The cost of hospitalization, the demand on the, uh, the technology that is uh, coming into the country, as well as the aging population, as well as the high burden of disease. Those, they actually lead to the high cost. And also, you find that people, they tend to look for the uh, highly uh, expensive services or like a five-star services so to say whereby I mean you see the high affluent societies going to to the best private rooms in the in the hospital and that leads into a situation whereby things like the cesarean sections in the country they are the highest in the world therefore I think one of the aim of uh, NHI is to basically to reduce that kind of situation that the Minister of Health, he calls it a high commercialization of healthcare. So with that kind of uh, activities that are happening, I think if NHI is properly planned and is properly structured, it will be able to, to reduce, uh, to, to introduce competition to the private healthcare. And therefore, with the two existing, one will be able to see the cost of healthcare going down because then the viable NHI will actually give people the alternative to be able to access their health services in other areas that are able to give them cost-effective services. You make a good point. In your view, will the medical schemes and NHI be able to exist in future and will it be a temporary uh, um, cohabitation or do you think it's, it's likely to be a permanent long-term um, Co-habitation or coexistence. When one looks at it in countries whereby NHI exists, for example, NHS system in the UK, this has been more there for more than 50 years, yeah. and there's a, a clear good relationship between the two. So I think even in our country itself, there's going to be a similar scenario happening over a long period of time. One of the predictions um, by the various role players um, in, the, in the healthcare industry broadly is that uh, one of the potential dangers or pitfalls for the, uh, the open medical scheme certainly is that NHI is going to result in the, the younger and healthier and, and, and definitely probably as well the uh, lower income members falling out of the medical schemes. Um, in the case of the low income members, they're simply not going to be able to afford to 
belong to the NHI arrangement overall, and, and then also fund their private uh, medical scheme contribution. Now this undermines a lot of the work that the medical schemes are currently doing in trying to attract the young and healthy members, the, the good profile members into their schemes. Um, do you think that the schemes are going to change their benefits to try to retain these members now? Or, or what, what are the types of changes you're looking at implementing in your scheme to retain these members going forward? Or if, if you're happy to share any of that with us. Well, it's true that the low, uh, low income earners, as well as the younger generation, they are also hard pressed with the economic challenges that the whole world is facing. And if NHI, it gets brought to South Africa, and it's done in a proper manner, we are bound to lose those kind of members. So we as a scheme, we have actually positioned ourselves to ensure that, I mean, when those challenges present themselves, we'll be ready to handle them. That's why I said in my initial response that we are ready to embrace NHI as it comes into the country. Presuming a successful NHI implementation, uh, how do you see medical schemes operating um, in future, so this is post post implementation. Um, would would they take up more of a health insurance space? And um, as you know, one of the cornerstones of the current open medical schemes is an open en enrolment and community rating environment. Do you see that being um, potentially changed to sustain the medical schemes going forward? Well, the the biggest challenge that we still have is that currently there is still that debate that's going on with regard to the medical aid scheme, uh, community rating, and as well as uh, uh, the health insurance itself. Yes. So for us, because we're still not, not, not too certain how the benefit package of the NHI is going to look like, there's still some uh, debate on it. Yes. That will influence or it will inform us what kind of uh, packages that we have to develop for that kind of market, because obviously, one has to be innovative in order to succeed in this kind of environment. Like I've mentioned earlier on that there will be uh, quite a changing of the landscape in the medical aid industry yes. and in the healthcare industry per se. So we need to be ready for that situation when it comes across. Okay, thank you. Um, the National Development Plan, which is uh, released recently, recognizes the fact that public-private partnerships are going to play a crucial role in the implementation of NHI. Um, I'm interested to hear what role specifically in that, in that capacity um, Bonitas Medical Plan can play um, going forward. Well, the fact that it's the public healthcare system, it has got the challenges of uh, human resource, the IT systems, uh, the health intelligence, even the process itself of uh, of uh, running the healthcare system. And we've got those kind of resources in the pri uh, private healthcare system, like the disease management. So therefore, the only way to ensure that we should be able to succeed going forward mm -hmm. is through the, the private-public partnership. That's why I think that's the only route to go. And also, this has been echoed several times by the previous or the late uh, Deputy Minister of Health, Dr. Sekularo, and actually, even the current uh, Minister of Health is also okay in the same system, that that's the best way to ensure that we succeed going forward. Thanks for that. Um, Bobby, I think if, if I could sum it up then, it's, it doesn't sound like it's all doom and gloom, um, but, but it's, it's probably a case of having to see the spaces and how they get filled in, um, in terms of what the benefit packages are and, and uh, um, uh, understandably, or hopefully, we'd know more once the white paper is released, and, and that, uh, I believe, is towards the end of the year. Um, but thank you for those insights. Um, stepping off now, off NHI for a moment, um, could you share with us what the current major threats, in your view, are for, for your medical scheme? Well, there, there are quite a number of challenges that are there, but I mean, for example, we at Bonitas, we are the second biggest largest scheme in the country. We've got the, the best solvency ratio in the country. Our average beneficiary age is one of the lowest. Our pensioner ratio is one of the lowest. Therefore, with that kind of uh, a scheme, there's uh, huge uh, opportunities because obviously the market, as you quite aware that 
is going through consolidation. Mm -hmm. We currently have close to about 95, 96 uh, schemes out there. And with the way the, the introduction of GEMS, which is actually uh, taking some of the members because of the heavy subsidy that they get from the government. Yes. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of consolidations. And with the scheme like Bonitas that I've mentioned, they'll only, the small schemes, it will be best for them to just consolidate, amalgamate, and merge with the big ones. Thank you. Um, then I'm also interested to hear what your experience has been regarding the access of your members to the service providers, and then specifically also in, in, in the current environment where we have a, a lack of any kind of regulating uh, or, or tariff regulation rather, um, your ability to be able to contract with um, provider groups to set up your designated service providers. What, what, what has the scheme's experience been? As Bonitas, being the largest uh, scheme or the second largest scheme in the country, that helps us to be able to influence in terms of negotiating these tariffs. Mm. And also the mere fact that as a scheme, most of our members, close to about 90% of them, they attend the, our network of GPs. Mm. Therefore, and recently in, 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 in last month, in August, September, we have actually introduced the specialist network. And with that, it has actually managed to assist us in ensuring that the costs of healthcare, they are managed properly going into the future. Okay, well, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's true to say, and it's, it's evident even from outside of the scheme, that the GP referral system has definitely borne fruits for the scheme. Um, just in closing then, Bobby, um, if, if you will, a, a message for the employer groups out there watching this podcast um, from, from your scheme. Uh, is there a specific message that you'd like to convey to them? Well, what I can uh, tell the employers out there is that ensure that your employees, they belong to a scheme that is large. Make sure that that scheme, it has got a, a financially stable uh, ratios or key indicators. For example, the solvency ratio should be well above the 25% that is envisaged by the regulator. Ensure that the average age of the beneficiary, it's quite low and also Ensure that, I mean, the expenses, they are also quite low. And also the turnaround of the benefits, they are also uh, quite excellent. Therefore, if you don't belong to that kind of uh, a scheme, I would advise the employers that, no, take your employees and take them to the, to the appropriate scheme. Well, um, Dr. Ramasia, thank you. Thank you very much for your insights. I'm sure that our employers will gain a lot of value from, from um, uh, watching the podcast. And uh, just in closing, thank you for taking the time to come and check with us today. The pleasure is mine. Full implementation of national health insurance is perhaps not something we will see in the next 20 years. But it is clear that some form of a public-private partnership is required to ensure that the desired outcome of the proposed NHI system is reached. And although the way in which medical schemes operate may change, there is widespread agreement that they will continue to exist for at least as long as it takes the Department of Health to address the current shortcomings in the public sector. Join us again on PSG Health Insights as we review the vital signs which drive costs in medical schemes.